Well, all right, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for joining me. This is your host, I D Jester. Thank you so much for the very, very short notice. Apologize for that, guys. I was not planning on doing a live stream with this. I was just going to record it, and then I decided at the last minute, well, well, what the heck? Let's just go ahead and broadcast it and see if anybody might be interested to come over and check it out. So uh, let's go ahead and get right into it. This is a scenario that I created. And it was basically to show off the power and flexibility of the actual editor that comes with Tigers in the Hunt. A full-fledged editor, you can create any kind of mission you can possibly dream of. And so that's what I did. And so we're going to go ahead and play it tonight. Let's bring her up and hopefully everything works as planned. So here it is. It is called The Longest Night, of course. The date, June 6, 1944, 4.35 a.m., location near saint comé du mont uh, The paratroopers on the 101st Airborne Division Screaming, Easel, Screaming Eagles jumped first on June 6, between uh, 48 and 140, scattered and disorganized for the first few hours. They somehow managed to locate more men of the division and formed into a fighting force. One very important objective for all the paratroopers was to secure the bridges that the Germans would use to reinforce the beaches in the coming hours. Member of the 101st set out towards saint Come de mont in an effort to trap the Germans on the wrong side, all the while looking for supplies that had fallen from dead soldiers or been abandoned by others. Uh, so you can see here we're looking with just squads, light machine guns, and this needs to be changed because that is not correct. The Americans, uh, squads, machine guns, demos, and bazookas. Hey, hey, Flyer, one, two, one, two, one, two. Welcome tonight. Thanks for joining us. Uh, you can see here it is two maps, but only uh, the bottom half of the maps are available, and Americans are going to set up only one squad per hex. The terrain is rural with a small river crossing with two bridges. It's only six game turns. The most important part is the special scenario rules. You can only play this as the American side. Um, <clears throat> the supply drop victory point locations represent the opportunity for the American player to gather supplies. The American unit that moves into that location can use their attached support weapons. The only American squad that can use their attached support weapons are those units that are the first unit to move into a victory point supply victory point location. All the American squads are assumed not all other American squads are assumed to not found support weapons. All right. So, um So that's that. So let's go ahead and get going here. Uh uh, we'll go ahead and do a new game. Yes, new game. There we go. So we're going to play as the Americans. We've got the computer do the Germans. Uh, normal difficulty, fog war enabled, path quality high, and away we will go here. So basically, what sets here's the way it's set up is there are victory point locations to take over the bridges, as you can see here. And then there are a few other supply locations out here that the American player can go out and get. And all the American units, as you can see on the, li on the list here, uh, actually have attached weapons with them. This one has a demo charge, medium machine gun, a bazooka, uh, bazooka, some more demo charges, etc. So... Um, if the American player moves a unit into that hex, then they can that unit can then use the actual that's uh, the actual weapon that's associated with it. That's why you can't play as the uh, as the Germans in this scenario because the computer doesn't understand the special scenario rules on this. So you can only play this scenario as the Americans. So we've got a lot of units. We just need to decide where we want to drop them. And it is only one uh, squad per hex. So let's take this guy. He's got a bazooka. So, you know, if we want to use a bazooka later on, we could drop this guy here and move it over. And when he moves into this hex, then that unit can then use the bazooka. So we got some bazookas. We got some demo charges. We got a medium machine gun. 
So I'd like to use this medium machine gun. So uh, what I would like to do is um, this guy has a demo charge. We're going to drop him there. Bazooka, we'll put him up there. Demo charge, we'll put him there. Medium machine gun, we're going to put him there. Demo charge, we'll put him there. Put him there. Another bazooka, we'll put him in the back. Uh, put this guy here. That guy there. Uh, bring this guy up there. Now, obviously, the units that have attached weapons that don't actually go back and get the victory, uh, I'm sorry, the supply drop, like this unit here, if he doesn't go back here, I can't use the bazooka. That's why you can't play as the computer, because the computer won't know that, and it'll automatically use the support weapons. Uh, leader, sure. Let's see if we can drop a leader in there. I'll bring another leader up here. And our last leader we'll use with our medium machine gun. Hopefully we can get the extra movement out of that. And you can see everybody's on board there. And we can now finish up. There we go. Administrative segment. Uh, no administration needed on the first turn. And away we go. We're not going to actually put anybody in fire move. Oh, we do need to check our... Oops, uh, scenario attributes here, so you guys can see at home. Scenario length is six turns. Uh, day visibility is only two hexes, so we can only see two hexes, because it's obviously nighttime. So we won't know where the Germans are until we get up nice and close. Obviously June 6th, uh, and of course, both sides are being aggressive and trying to take over the points. We're going to gain points if we go to victory, scenario victory here. You can see the American player actually gets a point if he gets these, but that's really not going to matter. What's going to matter is who holds the different locations at the bridge. These are worth 10 points each. So, oh, looks like I forgot to assign points down here. I'll have to do that as well. All right, so no fire, movement, away we go. Alright, so this guy here, we're going to double time him. Uh, we're going to choose the sergeant and the airborne. One, two, three, four, five. So he made it into that location. So I know that airborne squad number three, they can use their support weapon. Alright, so that's uh, airborne squad number three. But the other ones that don't go back and find the supplies aren't going to be able to do that. And we'll keep moving this guy as far as we can. We've got to get him back up to the front. Now, with that said, we do need to get some guys up here to try and secure these bridges. All right, so there we go. We got one of them. We could try it. Come. Nope, nope, he's done. Okay. Do, 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 do. All right, that's fine. Bring up some more reinforcements here. Uh, sure, put them there. Bring this guy up. And put these guys together. We want this guy to use a bazooka, so we want him to go back. Gather these supplies up. Hey, look, I found some supplies. So this guy here, number six, I'm going to write this down so I don't forget. <laughs> so unit three and unit six can use their support weapons. Uh, and then we're going to do the same thing here with this guy. To do, to do. Um, so that is Airborne Squad ID 0. Okay. Alright, so 0, 3, and 6. Uh, and there's another one way down over here. Do we want to run after that one as well? Sure, why not? Let's see. Can't make it this turn. We'll have to wait till next turn. So it's kind of uh, as the American player, you gotta kind of decide: is it worth spending the time to go get some extra support weapons to help your troops, or is it better just to try to mass up here and take these objectives as quick as possible? So anything that your little hearts desire. It, ooh, ooh, oh yeah, we're gonna be able to. 
advance into that hex right there and take over this bridge location. Poor guy's gonna get mauled, but uh, brr, let's do that it's like that. Did you move? You moved. Yes. You did ID zero six three, and I think there's one, two, three, four. Was there not another one? I thought. Oh yes, there is another one right there, which we're just gonna forgo, I guess. All right, so that is all the movements. Defensive fire, he won't be able to see us. Again, we only have a vision of two, uh, two spaces because it's nighttime. Advancing fire, we don't have any advancing fire. Routes, we don't have any routes. Advance, we would like to advance though. Advance into that hex. Advance into that hex. Uh, we're going to advance into that hex. We'll advance there, advance there, advance, bring our guy down with the medium machine gun, and we'll advance this guy towards his other objective over there. So at least we'll have a demo charge, a medium machine gun, and a couple uh, bazookas we could use if need be to kind of help support our efforts. Uh, I think that's everybody's advances. Did you advance? All right, done. Uh, no close combat. We can skip that. All right, and administratively we can skip that. All right, so now it is the Germans' turn. You can hear them moving. Moving, moving, moving. They're out there somewhere. Uh, no defensive fire. No routes. Oh, he just advanced into there. And you can see he's got quite a few units there. They already have some support weapons, and obviously they can use their support weapons. Uh, right, so, in the advancing segment, you cannot defensive fire up oh, more guys. See, I knew they were out there, we just didn't have line of sight to them because you can only two see two spaces because it is nighttime, so it's going to make it a nice close up fight. Coast combat, there is no coast combat. Uh, this poor guy that's out here in the open is in trouble, administrative segment we don't have any fire segment so see this guy notice how none of the enemies show up in line of sight here because he's not within line of sight you notice how these guys when I select this guy do show up as in line of sight but I think we've got to try and move this guy into this building and unfortunately he's gonna take a lot of firepower he is gonna take a lot of firepower uh, I could move them away because they wouldn't be able to fire on them, actually. That might actually be a nice little trick. Hmm. All right, so we're not going to actually fire. We're going to move. And what I want to do is move this guy back a space. Notice how they couldn't fire at me because I'm out of their range. And we're going to actually move this guy up. Help support. We're going to move this guy up. Get both sides of these bridges. And bring some more guys over. We're going to bring this guy up to the north. Help secure these bridges. Um, let's see here. I'm going to bring this guy up with the machine gun this way. This guy's going to come over. Ah, so unit number seven can use his demo charges. All right, and this guy's coming back this way. And uh, unit zero, so we can use his bazooka if need be. All right, so that's all of our moves. Things are going to get real interesting real fast here. 
All right, uh, movements are done. Defensive fire. He doesn't have any. I don't have any because we can't see one another. Routes, there are no routes. Advancing segment. Yes, we shall advance. You go there. You go there. Uh, you guys go there. You guys go there. Uh, you go there. You guys go there. And that is it. Nice, quick, and easy. Boom, done. Alright, Ghost Combat, there is none. Moving on to the Germans part of turn number two here. And this is where it's going to get real interesting because now they're going to have to be trying to take these points back. Here they come. Fortunately for us, we see them coming. Now, you notice I have a bazooka here, but this guy never got any supplies, so I can't use a bazooka. Same thing with his demo charge. This unit didn't gather any of the supplies, so we'll just have to do without. Excellent. We broke the leader and pinned a unit and broke a unit and pinned a unit. Take that. Uh, right, well, let's, again, can't use our support weapon, uh, wow, excellent, so we have eliminated his unit, broke, broke, and broke, wow, we had some awesome, awesome rolls there, unfortunately, he's going to get to shoot back at us with a couple of those units, we're out in the open as well, so there's going to be a lot of broken dudes here. Oh, and now he's brought up more guys here. So we are only first fired. So we can final fire. Excellent. We casually reduced his full squad to a half squad. He broke his sergeant and broke his elite unit. So he's still got a few guys left that he can do some damage back to us. But it is going to be a bloody mess here with all these units in close range because being in close range obviously you're gonna get a lot of firepower at uh, at a lot of units out in the open because these uh, these points are mostly out in the open so uh, you move somebody else here right there I cannot attack him with this unit here if we notice they are final fired they have the final fire marker on them. So I cannot defensive fire and with this unit unless he moves adjacent to me. Then I can do what they call final protective fire. And I can make an attack against him. But the attack also is a morale check against myself. So I can end up breaking my own units because they just feel so frightened being uh, so close to the enemy. So... It's a risky maneuver. You can do it, uh, but you have to think about the advantages and disadvantages. Now, the thing is, will he move up there? We shall see. Ah, uh, he chose not to. All right, so defensive fire, and if you have already have a marker, a first fire, or a final fire, you cannot fire in the defensive fire segment. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, then you haven't watched my video on the different fire uh, the different segments of the game so go watch my video and then come back all right here he goes here now he gets to advancing fire uh oh and look at his light machine gun broke oh my god <laughs> ah, he broke his light machine gun firing at me that's too bad feel sorry for you buddy Oh my god, our guys are holding strong. Look at these guys. Amazing. 101st Airborne Division. So, I forgot to do this earlier, but for those of you that are interested, here's the 101st Airborne drop pattern on D-Day, June 6, 1944. Obviously, there's a nice little uh, um, map here, a grid. The area we're actually talking about is uh, saint Come du mont is down here. There's actually some bridges down here that 
the 101st Airborne Division needed to secure to keep the uh, the Germans from advancing towards uh, the beaches of Omaha, Utah, etc. So securing these bridges and at least eliminating them or not allowing Germans to pass through them were obviously very important because that road led up here which of course led down to the beaches. So this is the area we are uh, the scenario we are actually in and fighting over is right there. So if you're interested to know, that is the information. All right, so advancing fire, are you done? No, you're not done. All right, he uh, pinned us, which is not horrible. Not horrible. And now it's the route. So all these broken units are going to have to route away. Get away, get away, get away. Because they don't like being close to enemies because they're broken. So they have to route away so that I can't shoot at them. Or they don't have line of sight to me, etc. Uh, is this guy in a building? Okay. Let's take a look. Let's remove. Okay, so these units are actually in a building. Uh, units that are broken do not have to route away unless they are actually in an open terrain hex or they're adjacent to enemies. So you have to, you must, you must route away if those, one of those two things happen. Either you're adjacent to an enemy or you're within line of sight and you're in the open. This guy's in a building so he does not have to route away. He can choose to route away if he wants to, but he doesn't have to. So he has chosen, obviously, not to, which is a bad choice for him. Close combat. There is no close combat, and we are going on to turn number three. Already almost halfway done with this wonderful scenario. Whoever created it is a master. Um, I don't know who. Who is that? That would be me. All right, so unit ID zero, remember this is the guy that picked up the the, um, the uh, bazooka. So he can use this. All these guys up here and here obviously can't use their support weapons. So what I might do here, we're in the administrative segment, so first things first, let's go through that. All right, fire segment. So, we have to decide who wants to fire. Are we going to move anybody, or are we just going to... Uh, we'll probably move these guys up here. Get a defensive line, maybe down this way. Uh, only have a vision radius of, of two. <laughs> Is uh, quite difficult. Because you can't see anybody until you get real close. So he could have a whole bunch of more units. And obviously he's going to be able to come down. If these guys stay to fight, it's going to be a bloodbath here. But you must do what you have to do. Again, I can't use any of these support weapons. Only the units that picked up uh, the support weapons by going over the victory point locations can use them. Uh, you can, though. Hmm, that might be interesting. Now you can only have three squads, full three full squads in a hex. We now we currently have two, so this guy can move up there and then shoot his bazooka. That might help. All right, I guess we'll stand our ground and see how it goes. We got a lot of firepower, so now the question is, do we want to go after the squad here with the light machine gun or? these guys over here there's two squads a leader I think we shall oh it'd be tempting to use that bazooka but I can't because this guy didn't get the support weapon so I think we're gonna shoot all right we broke another one of his guys unfortunately we did not do a lot of damage I was hoping for a better result than that. Uh, he actually can't see anybody. Is this an empty hex? Yeah, we killed everybody in that hex. So he's going to have to move. Everybody else is going to move, all right? So we'll go on to the movement segment. Mm -hmm. Move these guys there. Obviously, if I move into that hex, 
he will defensive fire and wipe us out. So we don't want that. So we will move here. We've kind of have the advantage right now, to tell you the truth, because uh, we've got the victory points, so we can stay where we need to. At this point, the enemy... Um, I want to move this guy up, is what I want to do. Hmm, but that'll draw the wrath. That'll draw a lot of defensive fire. <sighs> I'm just going to move him there. And we'll bring up the rest of our squads here. And see what we can do with them. Alright, and you... You can start helping secure these uh, southern flanks, just in case. So that is... If I move this guy here, he'll just defensive fire and just wipe out that whole stack. That's what I'm afraid of. So actually, I'm going to move this guy back. Hmm... Yeah, move him back. And back. We're going to actually put him in this building. So if they come across and they get to there, he'll be within range to shoot him. So done with moving. There we go. Defensive fire. So we pinned us. Wow, these guys are these guys are hanging in tough. Jeez, they've taken a lot of fire and they have not died yet. He shot his light machine gun. Notice it did not keep his rate of fire, or else he could fire it again. And of course, since he didn't keep his rate of fire, he gets a first fire marker. Wow, shot us again and no result. That is... Phew. Notice these guys were just blowing these guys up. Pretty good. Advancing fire. Uh, we have nobody in range, so we don't need to do that. Routes. Do we have anybody to route? No, we do not. Nobody's broken, so... He's going to have to route some units. Looks like he might be losing some units if he doesn't route. He's got a whole stack of broken units in there. He's got... He is well, well, one's a leader, one's a half squad, so he actually only has, he's got two full squads, a half squad, and a broken leader, and a good leader. So you can have unlimited number of leaders in your hex. I think there is a number, I don't remember what it is, five or six or something. Uh, but you probably don't want to, you want to keep your leaders separated out. Uh, advance, does he wish to advance? He does not wish to advance. All right. He could advance here and take over that location, but then he would be adjacent to me. And the start of the next turn, my guys would get to go. And I would be adjacent to him, which means my firepower is double. And I would just wipe him out. So advancing into that hex is not probably his best interest. Close combat. No close combat. On to... Ouch. So... He finally looks like he broke us. Yep. Finally broke under the pressure. And pinned our leader. That's... That's not good. Alright. What else is he going to do? Shot his machine gun. Didn't keep him on fire. Shot us again. And our airborne division has been casually reduced to a half squad. So one of them got knocked down to a half squad instead of a full squad. So about five guys died on the bridge there. And now he's in the movement segments. Uh, do we have anybody in here that can fire? Nope, we don't. These guys are out of range. These guys are out of range. So no defensive fire. Advancing fire. Now he routes first because he's the actual attacker in this part of the round. Now we have to route our units. Unfortunately, normally you can route your leader with them, but because our leader is pinned, 
he cannot route so only our units can route away and we will route them if I can click on them route away route away click on another hex there we go Did I click on the wrong hex did I? I want a little crawl. Interesting. I cannot route away. Normally you can route away. There must be a little a little bug in the system here. I've got it highlighted. Normally I'd be able to route. I'm wondering if it's because I'm actually on a bridge. It won't let me route away. Um... I don't know. I think I'm doing everything correctly. Route. Let's click off and click on another unit sometimes if I do that. Yes, only broken units can. I know that. Alright, come on. Come on. Route. Won't let me route. Okay, they're going to get eliminated. That's what that little thing represents because they're out in the open. And they're within line of sight of an enemy. If you don't route away, you're going to be eliminated. So for whatever reason, I can't route there. And they're going to get eliminated. Hey, Kilana. How are you doing tonight? Route. Yep, we just got eliminated and eliminated again. So these guys basically just jumped over the side of the bridge to get away. Uh, unfortunately, I think there might be a little bug there in the system, but who knows? Maybe I was doing something wrong. Could possibly be. Sorry about the short notice. Yeah, yeah. Um, I wasn't going to record, I wasn't going to do any live streams tonight, but I decided to, uh, at the last minute, I figured, ah, what the hell, I'll, I'll go ahead and live stream this and see if anybody's interested in joining and watching. Advances! Alright. Yep, now he took it over. That's a smart move on his part because now I don't have anybody that can actually shoot and I've got a leader next to him. So, yep. Now, if he starts coming across the bridge to get this one, that's when he's in trouble. Alright, that's half, half the game right there. We are done with turn three. Well, you just joined, so um, you miss the scenario specific. Uh, this is a user. I created this scenario, and uh, it's a night drop here with the 101st Airborne Division. Uh, so they randomly uh, land out here. You can see there's some victory points up here, up here, up here, up here, and up here. The, the American unit that runs over and gets the supplies can then use their support weapon so you can see this guy here has got a bazooka so this guy went up here found a bazooka and use it the all the other units can't use their support weapons they're just there as a representation that if that unit goes over there so it kind of um, you know the, as the American player you gotta kinda of decide what units you want to use their support weapons and those that don't uh, so this guy here, the bazooka ID number zero, uh, the medium machine gun, the bazooka, the demo charge, and that's one, two, three, four. So those four units can use their support weapons. The other units can't. But uh, if they come within range, we'll see. You never know. So this stack here, no demo charge, no demo charge, because the un those units... Uh, just came right up here to help su support the attack instead of going back and getting finding their supplies yeah so yeah if you're um, check out the uh, beginning of the intro of the um, video here and you'll be able to see I was trying to create a um, fancy dancy scenario with uh, you know just to show the power of the editor and what you can do if you just uh, think creativity creatively and uh, you know all right halfway done with this scenario we've got one victory 
All right, we got three of the bridge points. The Germans now secure one of them. So we'll see if we can hold on. Right now, we are winning. Each one of these is worth 10 points, so we have 30, and they have 10. Fire segment, we have nobody to fire. Movement segment. Uh, so, uh, yeah, if I move this guy here, these guys will just mow them down. <sighs> well, I think we got to try. Otherwise, he's just going to, well, actually having that guy there is not a bad thing. Because then I can see, I have line of sight for two hexes to what units he has. He could have units in here that we don't even know about. So maybe what I should do here is be all tricky. Come over this way so he can't come down and kind of, uh, you know, cut around the outside of us. So what am I going to do with this guy? I guess run, dude, run. Uh, run. Oh, there he was. I knew it wouldn't take long before he'd become broken. Alright, uh, we got a medium machine gun. Now this guy went back and picked up the supplies, and when he went to the supplies, he found a medium machine gun. So good for him, he can use it. So, we're going to put him inside this building right there. This guy went back, got some supplies, and guess what? He found a bazooka. So, um, we're going to try and secure our southern flank there. This guy can use his supplies. Because he went back and found them. And he found a demo charge. So, and so we ended up having uh, a bazooka, a bazooka, a medium machine gun, and a demo. The rest of the guys we have to ignore. That's why you can't play this scenario as the Germans, because the Germans won't know the scenario's special rules. Alright, so movement is not done. I'm going to assault move this guy into the... Might as well go in the woods where we get a little bit uh, better coverage. Everybody else has moved. Done. Defensive fire. What's he got for me? Probably some attacks on my broken leader. No. Alright. Advancing fire. We don't have any. Route. We shall... Route. Interesting, I can't route into this hex right here. <sighs> I should be able to. Because that's out of his range. One, two. So he couldn't interdict me if I could move into that hex. So that would... That's fine. We'll, we'll just have to go around the long way. We'll get to where I need to go to. That's found. Uh, that's fine. I'll be done with my routes. And advances. So, we'll advance this guy up on the bridge. Um, this guy, we need to advance. And I think everybody else is copacetic cool. At least they're in some kind of a defensive... These guys are still moving up. This guy did get the uh, bazooka. This guy did get the demo. This guy got the mini machine gun. And this guy got the bazooka as well. So those four units. I'm just trying to remember which four it is so I don't accidentally use some supplies that I'm not allowed to. All right, um, done with advances. Close combat, none. Germans are going to have to push this way and down, and as soon as they do, they're going to be out in the open, and we're just going to be able to maul them. So, uh, Sergeant failed to rally himself, so he's still broken. That's unfortunate. Here he comes! Uh... Okay, I'm not sure why we can see this guy. 
We only have a vision radius of two hexes, so nobody's within two hexes. So I think another, maybe a little glitch there. We should not be able to see this guy. Let's take everything off just to make sure I'm not missing something. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's one, two, three, that's one, two, three, four, that's one, two, three, four, one, two, three. One, two, three, so, um, let's see our, night visibility is basically only for uh, campaign games, where they take so many turns during the day and then so many turns at night. Whatever you set your day visibility at, uh, you know, day visibility is just a misnomer, it doesn't matter it's just going to be what what happens during the scenario you can set this to whatever you want and then you can say oh it's two hexes and it happens at night so it doesn't read the night visibility that's only for the campaign game good idea Good idea, chat line said, you know, click on our guy to see who has him visited, but you know what I'm thinking it is? Is the fact that we actually have a demo charge and a bazooka in there from our guys that got killed. I'm wondering if because those weapons are spotting it because it's on top of these weapons. I don't know the answer to that. But nobody has ranged or line of sight to him yet, so we'll go ahead and let him con Yeah, they're being sneaky, all right. But he's going to have to move up. Now we can see him. If I click, you can see this guy now sees that hex. This guy does not. This guy does not. But this is, this is within two hexes. So, yes, we should be able to see that guy. And unfortunately, we only have one guy... And a bazooka, but we can't shoot the bazooka because we can only shoot the bazooka and infantry if they're in buildings, fortified locations. Uh, and f well, let's see what the error says. Bazooka. Fire. Yeah, yeah. See, it just, just. But this guy can shoot. Oh, I broke two of his units. That's not bad. Unfortunately, he's still got another unit there. Doo, 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 doo. Defensive fire. I got nobody that can do defensive fire because everybody else is outside the range. Now he can advance fire and um, re breaks our leader there. That's okay. Yeah, you should have been here earlier, man. We came across this bridge, and we just totally decimated him uh, when he moved up. I mean, we wiped out a few of his squads there. Uh, so he advances, or he, I'm sorry, routes into this hex because he can't actually see any. So here's the way we do routes, and this is a little confusing for people. You can't route towards any known enemy. You can't go closer. So he's two spaces away. So he could go here because that's still two spaces away. And even though we have units there, this is not a known enemy to him because it's oh, it's three spaces. It's out of his vision range. See, we can't see one another. So these guys can move towards us because he doesn't know we are there. Uh, all right, so and then he decides to says, "Oh shit, I'm going the wrong way," and decide to run away. And now he interdicts. He's out in the open. Normally, I could shoot him and interdict, but nobody's within range and can see him, so he's fine. He can move all he wants, and uh, that's pretty much all of his routes. He can advance now. Is he going to take the risk to move up here? He doesn't. He doesn't. Hmm. Oh, you know what? I forgot to route. Shoot. I was so busy watching him. <laughs> I forgot to actually do my own stuff. All right. Um, so our 
you did uh, sergeant failed to rally himself that's pretty crappy I forgot I should have routed him away all right fire we got nobody to fire oh we do actually have a fire um I shoot at him again Good. We broke the sergeant we cannot shoot the bazooka though uh so that is it we're gonna get spunky here we're gonna actually try to move some guys up and come around the back side here and get this building oh he's got guys in there what does he have oh some broken guys well then we can just keep on moving right up next to him oh, that wasn't good he had more guys here that we didn't see I probably should have brought him here so the building would have blocked line of sight but our sergeant's been wounded and our airborne ID number four has been broken. Darn it. Uh, but notice his units there all B plus again. Yeah, Fog of War is pretty good in this game. Uh, this is really, like I said in the beginning, is a real tight scenario. You only have a vision radius of two spaces, so I figured it was going to be close quarter fighting over these little bridge locations. Just a a spot on one side and a spot on the other side of the bridge. That's it. So you're fighting over this little locations here. Nice and tight. Um, I'm still not done with my movement. I'm not done with my movement. So we're gonna we're gonna get we're gonna get crazy here. We're gonna what? He file fired. All right, I'm willing to risk it. I want to move this guy right here so he can look right down that bridge line. Anybody time somebody moves. There we go. So he could have final protective fire, but again, he didn't want to risk um, rolling a morale check on himself. Uh, you guys, what are you going to do? You have a demo charge. Was this one of the guys? No, he did not get the demo charge. This is the guy with the demo charge. That's right. Damn it. Otherwise, they could have shown you that. I've done it in a few episodes so far. Alright, so we'll just bring out some reinforcements there. So this guy doesn't actually have a demo charge because he didn't go and pick up the supplies. Alright, so we've got some close-in tight fighting here, which is cool. I like that. Probably should have given the Germans a little bit of leeway. The problem was... The Americans all landed out here in the beginning of the scenario. There's a bunch of different um, uh, zones you can choose. And then the Americans got to move, and they moved right up on the bridges. So when the Germans got to move down, the Americans were already here. And uh, what I think I need to do is put, put some Germans here already. So when the Americans are going to have a harder time getting this bridge, but they'll have an easier time of getting this bridge. So it'll make it a little more Americans get this bridge, the Germans get this bridge, and then you gotta kind of fight over who's gonna get the extra the other man's bridge. <laughs> Alright, um do I want to bring you down? Do da sure why not? Alright. So that is all good. I could bring actually bring this guy up around behind. Ooh, that would be nasty, wouldn't it? Let's do it. Let's do it. That would be a very nasty maneuver. Because these broken units are going to be... In, they'll be able to route out this way, but we'll be able to advance into this hex. We'll be in the building, and these poor bastards caught between us are <laughs> that are all broken are going to be in big trouble. So, yeah. Uh, that was just... That was like the... Um, Bobby Fisher chess player move that you know he just gets a big smile on his face because he knows that's like the game winning move right there I think that's going to be the game winning move just bringing these guys up because these guys are going to have to route uh, if they route here they're going to have to low crawl or we'll be able to defensive fire on them then we can advance into this hex uh, which can make it pretty interesting because he's got a squad there, but these broken guys are going to try to broke, try to run away, and they're just going to run into more guys over here. 
Plus we got a couple units back here securing our bridge flanks. So I think uh, that is going to be it for the movement. And now we got our medium machine gun up here. So it was worth our effort to go back and get the medium machine gun and bring it all the way up. All right, so that is it for movement, right? Yes. 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 All right. All right, advancing fire. Yes, we will. Use, uh, we can advancing fire with our medium machine gun, but we can with our squads and our leader. And I was just hoping to casually reduce them there. But unfortunately, we did not. Uh, we can actually advance these guys. Uh, there we go. We got to casually reduce there. And we can also... Hmm. We cannot shoot with that guy because he is broken. Alright. Uh, so that is all of the advancing fire. All right, route. We have to route first because we're at the actual. It's considered the attacker of this beginning part of the turn here. So we have to route first, which means we have to route this guy away. Unfortunately, because I would have loved. We'll just route him over there in the woods. You want to get him to woods or buildings? They will give you a bonus to help rally. It might take a turn or two. Uh, this guy here, which is just a sergeant, should, I mean, we could route him back away and even farther, but these guys are going to have to go away, so I don't see anybody who's going to be able to shoot at this guy, so I'm just going to leave him right there, and he's going to end up getting some lost units here because he won't be able to route. Uh, that was the old end run around the corner maneuver. He actually routed guys onto the bridge. Advance. All right. Well, we will advance into the building. Chunk. And these guys will advance in the woods. These guys who actually have a demo charge to secure that. What's here? What is here? Oh, he's got a he's got a unit there. You know what? Let's do a little melee combat. What do you think? We can actually take the sergeant with us. So we'd have an airborne squad and a sergeant versus... Um, what's in this hex? A uh, elite unit with a medium machine gun. I'd like to leave the sergeant behind to help with the medium machine gun fire, but... I think uh, I think b breaking this unit and going in there, causing a melee is going to be just too good, just too good to pass up. All right, so we actually have close combat. Have close combat. Uh, Defender has been eliminated. Yeah. All right, we win that fight. Airborne jumped on him. Use your little knives and bayonets and took him out. Pistols, whatever they. Uh, spears, arrows, I don't know, whatever they had. And that broke these guy again. He's got a couple broken guys there. Yeah, the Germans are in a world of hurt right now. Uh, Sergeant rallied himself. So our guy back here rallied, and our airborne unit failed to rally. Oh, he didn't rally. Okay. Uh, that's it. So now they can attack. And his light machine gun broke. Oh, boy. Unfortunate for the Germans. That's the second time they've had a machine gun break on them. Uh, he pinned us with his fire. That's not good enough. Now he moved, so we can... Uh... Which guy was it? Was it this guy that moved? Yeah. All right. So we could shoot at him. Let's shoot at him. Um, sure. <laughs> Kaiser reduced him, and we broke him. Moving out in the open. Uh, in your enemy's range and line of sight, very, very tough. 
Uh, defensive fire. We got a little bit of defensive fire. First thing, let's use this machine gun. We finally got it up there. Let's use it. Uh, and we didn't keep a rate of fire. Oh. Uh, we got this. We got this. Shoot at these guys. Oh, we casually reduced them. Pinned the sergeant and then casually reduced his other squad. So two full squads went to two half squads. And then we eliminated one of his half squads. So we killed about 15 guys in that attack. Each squad represents about 10 men. So we killed one full squad and half of another squad. So that's about 15 guys we just wiped out. Uh, yeah, they're not in real good shape at this point. Uh, nobody else has line of sight. Routes, he's in big trouble. He can't route anywhere. Because as soon as you route and Jason to an enemy, you're immediately eliminated. So he might be able to route here. But if he routes there, I can interdict him. Which means, yeah, he's in big trouble. Uh, he could try to roll crawl. But is that a... That is an open hex. So if he roll crawls here, he'll be eliminated for failure to route. Because he'll be in an open area in line of sight and range to an enemy. So these guys are all going to be eliminated. That is the Bobby Fisher sweep end maneuver in World War II. <laughs> uh, all right. You are routing away, trying to get out of our line of sight. Probably a smart idea. These guys. He will crawl there. Still within range and line of sight. I think he's going to be eliminated, though. Let's see. Yep, the squad's been eliminated. Bloop, bye. Uh, our rounds, yeah, we don't need, we only have one broken unit. He's fine over there where he's at. Advance, he's advancing, sure. Oh, he actually advanced into our space here. What? Okay, get it on. He wants that he wants that building back. So uh we're gonna check for ambush. Ambush fails. So anytime you go into a woods or a building and you have close combat, uh you can have an ambush. The side that gets the ambush gets a bonus. Uh, there was no ambushes in this case. Coast combat defender was eliminated. Ah! And, well, we took out half a squad with this, though. So he eliminated us. I believe he eliminated us. German, uh, combat result defender eliminated. So it was our... Hmm, was it here? No, it wasn't there. It was here, I thought. Hmm. Defender was eliminated, and the German half squad was eliminated. I thought the symbol was here. Could have been there, though. All right. Whatever. Let's move on. Last turn, turn number six. This is going to be an easy one. Shoot and kill, shoot and kill. Uh, fire segments. Uh, sure, let's fire. Fire at everybody. Mm. Right there. Our medium machine gun, unfortunately, doesn't have range. This guy here can fire, though. Uh, fire. Oh, he eliminated his sergeant. Shot him in the back. There we go. Um, we'll do some crazy stuff here. We'll move. So, done with fire. Ah, oh, it's too bad that this... Can't we can't use a leader to go with this guy because the leader can't move very far. <laughs> Ah, he pinned us. Darn it. Alright, uh, I was hoping to actually come up behind him here and pin all these guys into position, but 
he uh, defensive fired on us too quickly and got a result oh well you fired nobody's there probably what I need to do because the river is two spaces wide is make it so you can shoot three spaces that way you can shoot at each other across the river that's probably an even better idea I think that's what I was trying to do actually when I adjusted the scenario attributes I actually adjusted the night visibility to three X's and now uh, what I meant to do is adjust the day visibility to three X's uh, again night visibility doesn't matter unless you're playing a campaign game so is what my understanding is. I could be wrong. Don't quote me on that. Um, I mean, I could move the bazooka up. I could move this guy up, but they're not going to do anything. So let's just end the turn. Defensive fire doesn't sound like he has any. Advancing fire. This guy can actually defensive fire. Um, he didn't. Yeah, okay. He didn't have the demo charge anyways, but... Okay, routes. Nobody to route. He's got to route away. I still don't know how that route, that unit that will crawl there, wasn't eliminated from this guy. He should have been eliminated. Wow, all those guys came back, too. Too late for him. Way too late. But the guy that routed here... From here was within range and line of sight of our units I don't think they were broken so these guys as well so I think he should have been eliminated but oh well because he's not in the open right yeah it's just an open hex all right get over it and move on okay I'm, I'm, I'm getting over it um, and the fact that I couldn't route my units from here back to here so I think there's something going on with the routing on the bridges maybe I don't know anyways uh, routes yeah we don't need a route so you can go ahead and route all you want we are going to oh you know what we never took that victory point back god damn it <laughs> So we're going to end up having a, ma a minor victory here instead of a major victory. Because Oh, no, wait. I got advances. Yes. I thought I did. Okay. I was going to say, did I forget to advance? <laughs> um, that would have been really stupid on my part. Let's just advance one guy out there. We don't need to advance one guy there. Uh, let's go ahead and advance these guys up. And we'll actually advance our medium machine gun up and you know what these guys are feeling rambunctious they'll move up <coughs> we're going to chase these Germans all the way back alright so that is the advanced segment close combat unfortunately we don't have any now it's their turn the last turn for them to try and get the point back so he's got a, quite a big force right there he could try to manhandle me there but uh, he's going to have to defensive fire, or he's going to have to fire and kill me, fire and kill me, and fire and kill me. Because if he doesn't do that, then we're just going to maul him back. So it's going to be, he's going to get first shot. The question is, how many guys can he kill in his shot? Uh, and he chose to shoot at our most dangerous threat, which is our medium machine gun first. Which makes sense, but unfortunate for him. Well, he only fired with two guys, which is smart, because maybe he's thinking about doing some thing else with the other units. Movement segments. Okay, well, finally get to use our medium machine gun. Let's use it. And it did not keep his rate of fire. So we've went through all the effort of running back to get it, bringing it, hauling that thing all the way up here, and it got to shoot twice. <laughs> ah, that's funny. Uh, and both times it did not keep his rate of fire. So unfortunate for him. 
All right, so what we need to actually get out of this is Look at that. Broke his sergeant, broke his elite squad, broke his other elite squad. So, yeah, he's in trouble. Alright, so wounded his sergeant, eliminated his squad, so killed about 10 guys there. And you shoot at, I don't know, what you shoot at there. You shoot at that guy there. Alright, broke his leader. That's pretty good defensive fire there folks these airborne units are pretty tough so he's routing uh, low crawl low crawl so we can't interdict him unfortunate routes I don't think we have any Yep, there it comes. He's gonna. He, yep, he figured. What the hell? I've got to get. I gotta try and get that victory point back. So he brought his guys in. Let's see if what happens. No effect. No effect. So we will keep the uh, victory point location, and that will be the end of the scenario. Although I didn't assign any points to it, you can obviously see major victory would be 40 points. Minor victory would be 30 points. A draw would be 20 points. Minor defeat, 10 points. Major defeat, 0 points. Because each one of these uh, victory locations are worth 10 points. So I forgot to assign that. I'll have to do that. The other thing, to make it a little more tougher, I would probably... Uh, Germans are starting back here. I would probably start the Germans up already at the bridge here. So the Americans just can't secure both of them by moving right off the bat. So, a decisive American. Uh, and then I would change it to three for line of sight. So that way you guys, you can shoot across the bridge. The guys on one side can see across. So a little bit more field of vision. Um, so yeah, not bad, not bad. What do you guys think? Not too shabby. So um, I'll give you guys just a quick look at the editor. Do we want to end this scenario? Yes, we want to end it. Uh, we'll actually just go into the editor here and bring up Longest Night here. So settings, scenario attributes, we're going to turn this to three hexes. And then for the Germans, we're going to uh, do unit on map. Delete them all off the map and then I'll reassign where they go. Do 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 do. So this way you guys get to see a little bit of the editor as well. So I wanted to just I just wanted to create something that had a meeting engagement. I uh, just wanted to create a meeting meeting engagement, um, and just kind of show off the ability of the editor to create your own scenario. If you're joining us late, of course, this is Tigers on the Hunt. You can find out more information about it on the Matrix Games and Slytherin website. So now we just need to put some of the German units back here. Um, so what we'll do is we'll have them up uh, a little bit closer. We'll have one down there. Oh, geez, did not mean to put it there, but okay. Put that one there. And put a few units out here. Um, 
Do that one there. And put that one there. That's fine. There we go. So yeah, I mean, here's the different locations the American player can drop to. They can assign where the, what units are going to go where. And uh, now they have to f actually fight over the bridge. The problem I ran into was I came up here and just doo -doo -doo, took over like the bridge. So when the Germans came down, they were all out in the open, and I just blew them all away. Didn't the Germans have tanks on D-Day there? Well, I'm sure they probably did all over the place. But in this certain um, location, at this certain time, in this certain scenario, they uh, didn't have any vehicles. Now, you know, we could actually add a like a little half track or something in. That would be something to, uh, yeah, let's do that. That's a good idea. I like that. So we're just going to insert a German. Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. Let's go with a uh, 250, 250 slash 1. It's going to come in and turn 1. Yep, I agree. That way, if we have something there, it's, they're going to want to have bazookas. Yep, yep. So we're just going to change his covering arc a little bit. We're going to put him in the back. So this way he's going to actually have to move up. Uh, but yeah, so that's, that's, that's a good idea. I like that. We had a little half track for... Uh, and actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and add in a couple more... Uh, actually, let's cancel that. I'll show you even an easier way. So I want just another elite squad. All I have to do is come here to modify and add in two more. And uh, these will be like the reinforcements. They'll come up here and start at the top. So hopefully uh, now the Americans will move up. They'll have to engage the Germans here. Hopefully the Germans will then come down here. Let's uh let's um you know what? Let's uh let's clone this. Let's actually make one more of these guys. So we'll give the we'll give the uh, Germans two. Two. Not one, but two. How many? Two. Two little two fifty slash one. So that way they're really gonna have to think about getting their supply points to get those bazooka units up. Uh, the medium machine gun will also take this thing out as well. So, and of course the demo charges. So these supply drops are going to be very important for the Americans now. I like I like the suggestion. So, uh, anything else you guys see? So you can see how the units that are actually on the map are highlighted in bold. So these units are on the board. The ones that are not in bold are not on the map so you want to make sure each one of those units is assigned a zone if it's not assigned a zone it'll just randomly go into any spot and you don't want that to happen because you can ruin your scenario so you just don't want Germans popping over here uh, so we changed we changed our day visibility six turns seems about right and we will save this and exit out. And the last thing to change our actually actual scenario, actually even easier now that I've got a shortcut to it, is to go into our scenarios and look at our longest next longest night text file, which we had squads, light machine guns. We don't have any of that, 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 and we don't have any of that, but we do now have AFVs. Uh, so squads, machine gun, demo, bazooka. Uh, that is good. Now we can save that, and there we go. Now everything should be working. And we had these changes, and we got it all edited and created in just a few minutes there. So 
All right, guys, thanks for joining us tonight for a little bit more Tigers on the Hunt. You can check out more video action of Tigers on the Hunt if you like what you see. I got some tutorial videos. I got uh, other scenarios. I got how to use the editor. Of course, check, check the Matrix Games website, www.matrixgames.com. And, of course, Slytherin, www.slytherin.com. To find out more information about Tigers on the Hunt, it was just released on the 25th, two short days ago. It is a heavily inspired game by the old board game, the old Advanced Squad Leader board game. So if you uh, remember that game or are interested in playing it, definitely check it out. Thanks for joining us on short notice, and we will see you guys next time. So thanks a lot.